Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. In the last video, we were discussing about the substitution techniques where uh, the plain text letters were replaced with something else to create your cipher text, isn't it? So in this video, I'm going to focus on the other side or the uh, other uh, uh, way of uh, creating the cipher text, which we call them as the transposition ciphers. Okay, so in cryptography, a transposition cipher is also called a permutation cipher, which scrambles the positions of the characters of the plain text without changing the characters themselves. In simple way, what it does is it tries to obscure the message by rearranging the order of the letters in the plain text. So whatever you are giving in the plain text, none of it will be changed. Only the order of the letters in the plain text will be changed by a transposition cipher. One of the simplest ways of doing it is something called as a rail fence technique in which the plain text is written down as a sequence of diagonals and then read off as a sequence of rows. So to better understand this, let me show you an example. So this is what I want to actually uh, send it to my receiver. Meet me after the toga party. This is the message which I want to send it. So now taking into consideration that I'm not going to use any substitution scheme here. So substitution scheme uh, requires changing of these alphabets into something else or replacing them with something else uh, completely new. But here, a transposition technique just simply changes the order of these letters. And here we are saying that this particular plain text is now written or is now uh, converted into a cipher text using the rail fence technique and a depth of two. Depth of two is nothing but we use two rows here. That's all. You can see we are writing them as a diagonals. So this is my message, meet me after the toga party. What I did was M E E T M E meet me after T E R the toga party. So I just have written them in the diagonal manner. You can see this. I written my plain text in the form of a diagonal. And then in order to create the cipher text, what I would do is I'll simply start reading row wise. So M E M A T R H T G P R Y E T E F E T E O O A T. So this is what I will be transmitting to my receiver. Because the receiver knows that I'm using a depth of two, he will be rearranging these things. M E E T. You can see his M E M E. He will be writing down this in this particular format, and then he can read it in this particular way to recreate the original plain text. This is the simplest of the uh, transposition techniques and we call them as rail fence because you simply you write them in uh, diagonals and then you start reading them in rows this is what a rail fence technique is a slightly more complex technique for your uh, transposition ciphers is something called as columnar transposition matrix or columnar transposition method what we do here is you can see this a more complex scheme is to write the message in a rectangle row by row and read the message of column by column but permute the order of the columns to understand this what is saying that is both the sender and receiver can accept on a particular order of reading which we can call it as a key so let me tell you let me explain this particular concept with a simple example now i want to send this particular message to my friend meet tomorrow then i also told him that hey the keyword is four or the secret is four which will tell my friend that I'm going to use four columns here. I'm going to use four columns. And also I'll say this is my key, 3142. What it says is that now I have decided to use four columns. I am going to write my message into four columns. If you calculate the number of words in my plain text, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There are 12 letters, isn't it? So 12 letters to be written in four columns gives me how many rows? Three rows. So what will the sender do is he will simply create this matrix and he will write this message in this form. M-E-E-T meet tomorrow. Now, simply we can just write down these columns and send it off. But to make it much more difficult for the attacker to do the cryptanalysis, what I will be doing is I have selected this particular order as the key. This is my key which I will share it with my receiver. The receiver will be receiving this. So what I will be doing is 
to create my cipher text once i disk once i decided upon the pattern of the key i will start reading in this particular order the first one i will be writing is e o r after this the second one we will be reading is t o w and the next one i will be reading is m t r after that finally e m o this is what i will be sending it you can see this is the cipher text that has been generated by the sender and this will be sent to the receiver the receiver will also know this particular pattern so when he sees that the key is 3142 he knows that the highest number is 4 and he can understand that the number of columns are 4 immediately he can calculate the number of uh, characters here and he will come to the conclusion that three rows are to be used that he can that we can use three rows and he will simply design the matrix and he will start writing them in this particular order and can read back using the key to get the original message. Okay. So to, to better understand another example, I'm showing this to you. Let the plain text be attack postponed until 2 a.m. And the sender has decided to use seven columns. You can see this is my key here. The key is 4, 3, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7. When this is sent to the receiver, when the receiver receives this particular key, he will be observing that the highest number is 7 and he knows that there are 7 columns. To discuss how many rows are there, he will simply count the number of characters, divide it, round it off to the nearest integer. So he can he knows now that there are 4 rows. And this is what the sender will do. The sender will start writing them, writing the message row-wise and to create the ciphertext, because he has selected this pattern as the key, the first thing that he will be sending is T, T, N, A. First column. So, this one is read first. Followed by this. So, you can see A, P, T, M. And then, followed by this. You can see T, S, U, O. And then, followed by this, which is the fourth one. So, this is how the ciphertext is created and sent to the receiver. So, this is called as a columnar transposition cipher so you write the message what whichever plain text is there in the form of rows and then read them or or create the cipher text according to a some predetermined order of columns that predetermined order is nothing but the key which is to be securely shared with your receiver so that the receiver can recreate your plain text so let me show you a couple of examples just to give a better understanding of this now it is asking me decrypt the message. Something is written here with secret key 5 shared with the receiver. So imagine that I am the receiver. I got this message and I also received that my key is 5. So let me count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. There are 20 characters here. And I know that I am going to use 5 columns because the secret key is 5. So simply what I will do is I will create a 5 by 4 matrix. 20 letters divided by 5 columns gives me 4 rows. So this is the matrix and let me write it down whatever I received here. Okay. So C, E, E, I, A, I, M, N, L, N O G L T R V M H N W. So you start reading row wise, which gives my plain text as call me in the morning and there are something called as vw obviously the receiver will understand that these are used as fillers and they have no uh, nothing to do with the plain text so this is the message that was now received and i decoded by simply using this let me show you another way of another way of doing things so for convenience instead of a key so if i want to use a key or the order in which this uh, this particular columns are read it becomes a difficult task so instead of that, I can simply choose a particular keyword. For example, if I want to use money as the keyword, 
I'll just tell my receiver money is the keyword. What it will tell the receiver is this, the let the alphabets, the order of these alphabets will decide the order in which the columns are to be read. So to better understand this, let me show you a simple example. Now let me try to encrypt the message by some milk and eggs using a transposition cipher with keyword as money. Once again, if you read here, if I see money, how many characters are there in my keyword? One, two, three, four, five. I know that there are five columns. And if you count them, three, six, nine, 11, 13, 14, 18. So obviously what I will be doing is because I'm encrypting the message, there are 18 characters here. And for five <coughs> columns, I will get, I can use till 20 by using two X's. So let me create this matrix and fill my letter. So B U Y by S O M E M I L K milk and E G G X. So because I can't leave these two empty, I'm just using some kind of random letters or filler letters. Usually we use X or uh, Z. So this is what. As my keyword is money, I can write my keyword here, M-O-N-E-Y. Now, using the alphabetical order, which of these alphabets comes first? Which of these alphabets comes first? E comes first. So this is one, followed by M, two, N is three, O is four, and finally Y is five, which makes this or which makes the cipher text as first I will be writing this down, which is E. So S I D X followed by B M K G followed by Y M N S followed by U E A G and finally zero or O L E X. This is what I get as a cipher text which I'll send it to my receiver. My receiver already knows the keyword to be as money. He knows that there are 20 characters here and he is going to use this particular money. He calculated there are five columns. So imagine how does he get this message out of this. So let me write it down. So he'll create a simple matrix. I'm not just going to draw it. I know that I have to write it down as column wise and I have five columns and four rows. So yes, uh, so give, me a, give me a second. So at the receiver, what I'll be doing is yes, I, D, X, only four rows, isn't it? So B, M, K, G. Next comes Y, M, N, S. Next is U, E, A, G. Next is O, L, E, X. Just number them up. One, two, three, four, five. Because my receiver knows the key word as money, he knows that one, two, three, four, five. So what he will be doing is, he will be rearranging these according to my own thing. So you can see that the first, the first column to be written down is two. So what is your second column here? This. So B, M, K, G. So the next column to be written is four according to my keyword. So U, E, A, G. And then next comes third one. Third one is Y, M, N, S. Next comes fourth. So next is, where is this? Yes, this one. So next one is the first one. Yes, I, D, X. The last one is the fifth one. So O, L, E, X. Then you can start reading it row wise by some milk and eggs. So my original plain text is now with my 
the receiver. This is a very simple procedure. And the thing is this, the transmission ciphers are quite popular during world wars uh, to send messages which are to be quickly analyzed by the receiver and afterwards uh, doesn't have much significance. The transposition cipher can be significantly more secure by performing more than one stage of transposition. That means whatever we did here, we can do it twice again so that the ordering of the letters and all can be much more made much more difficult for an attacker to cryptanalyze and identify the frequency patterns. The result is a more complex permutation that is not easily reconstructed. But the problem with these uh, ciphers is that it still maintains the frequency of the individual letters, making it vulnerable to frequency analysis done by the cryptanalysis, by the cryptanalyst. So this is regarding the different transposition ciphers that are there. And hopefully you understood this. And if you have any uh, doubts regarding this, you can always ping me in the comment section. So thank you very much and uh, do take care. Good luck.